Welcome everybody. In this short video, I would like to tell you how you can use Grammar's rule to solve this problem where we have two equations and two unknown variables. So uh, in equation one, x1 and x2 pop up and the same is in equation two, x2 and x1. Uh, so we want to find the solution to this system of equations. In the first step, it is very important that we collect the unknown variables like x1 and x2 on the left hand side and all the other stuff on the right hand side. So we have to put this one on the right hand side and the three x2 on the left hand side. The one will pop up with a positive sign on the right hand side and the three x2 on the left hand side with a negative sign. When we put the 6 on the right hand side, it will be positive. And when we put the 5 minus 5 x1 on the left hand side, it will pop up with a positive sign. Let's do so. Now we have sorted the two equations in a way that the unknown variables x1 are located below each other in the two equations so that it is possible to write these two equations as a system of matrices and vectors. So we have collected the two and the minus three here and the five and the minus four in the lower part. X1 and X2 here and the right hand side is collected in this part. So this expression here consists out of the so-called coefficient matrix, the vector of the two unknowns and the solution vector. Let's compute x1. x1 is located on the first position of the vector of the two unknowns. Therefore, Kramer's rule takes, tells you, take the elements from the solution vector and substitute the first column of the coefficient matrix. So you should take the elements one and six and insert them here into the first column because x1 is located on the first position. And then you should compute the determinant of the change coefficient matrix and divide it by the determinant of the unchanged coefficient matrix. This is mentioned here in equation number 10. We have the change coefficient matrix in the numerator of this fraction and in the denominator of this fraction. And there is the unchanged coefficient matrix. The two lines here they are not square brackets, they are not absolute signs, but they indicate that you should compute the determinant. A determinant is computed in the following way. You have to compute the product of the main diagonal and you have to subtract the product of the side diagonal. The product of the main diagonal is one times minus four, one times minus four, and then subtract the product of the side diagonal minus six times minus three. The same in the denominator, two times minus four minus five times minus three. So we get a minus four here, a plus 18 there, a minus eight here, and a plus 15 there. Therefore, x1 is equal to 14 over 7, x1 is equal to 2. Let's have a look at x2. Uh, we want to compute x2 by applying Kramer's rule. x2 is located on the second position in the vector of the two unknowns. Therefore, Kramer's rule tells you, take the elements of the solution vector and substitute the solution vector into the second column of the coefficient matrix because x2 is located on the second position. Afterwards, you should compute the determinant of the change coefficient matrix and divide it by the determinant of the unchanged coefficient matrix. So once more, product of the main diagonal, two times six, minus the product of the side diagonal, minus five times one. The denominator is the same as before. So we get a 12 here, a minus 5 here. So x2 is equal to 
7 over 7, x2 is equal to 1. Now we can cross check whether x1 is really equal to 2 and x2 is really equal to 1. So we have to insert x1 is equal to 2 in this part here and x2 is equal to 1 on the right hand side. And then of course the equal sign should hold. Same for equation number 2. Let's do so. 2 times x1, 2 times 2, minus 1 should be equal to 3 times 1. So 3 on the left hand side, 3 on the right hand side, 3 is equal to 3, check. Then minus 6 minus 4 times x2 should be equal to minus 5 times x1. So the left hand side is equal to minus 10. The right hand side is also equal to minus 10. So let's make a check here and we have cross checked that we did not make a mistake but x2 is equal to 1 and x1 is equal to 2 solves the system of equations. Thank you very much for watching this video.